The internet has obviously completely changed the, the face of marketing in this country and I'm absolutely loving it. You know, I am at the end of the day just a mum running a website for mums and yet we find ourselves at the cutting edge of advertising and marketing um, and the revolution that is happening at the moment. So for me it's a really exciting time. I would say to a brand that if you if you understand what your key messages are, if you believe in your brand, if you're not trying to hide anything, that's really all you have to do. You know, people on, on, on social networks, they want to have the conversation with you. They don't want to have your messages wrapped up in clever creatives that you're sort of manipulating or, or, or patronising the audience. What they actually want is to just hear why you believe in your brand. At the end of the day, we're the consumers, we're going to buy the stuff, um, but we need to believe in it and we need to hear that you believe in it. And I think it is important that the, the marketing directors kind of come out of the boardroom and, and come and talk to their customers. And this is a opportunity um, for brands to do that. We had the um, director of online shopping for Sainsbury's come to us recently and we actually put him in our forums and we helped, you know, we helped him. He was a little bit nervous um, and we, we sort of held his hand along the way but we actually put him in the forums with his little picture and, and a little bio about him on there and, and he basically said, you know, hello mums, net mums have given me this opportunity to come and talk to you. Um, my job is to get people to do their shopping online at Sainsbury's and I have focus groups and research groups and I have you know, every kind of um, agency at my disposal and I have you know, tons of information but actually you're the people who do the shopping, I want to hear from you. Do you do your shopping online? If so, where and why and if not, why as well? Um, and he just had an incredible response. The, the people who use the forums, the moms, the shoppers, were so pleased to actually be asked their opinion by somebody, um, you know, not a middleman or a celebrity mom. It wasn't Mylene Class, it was actually the director himself coming and talking to them. He got over, I think, 500 comments. Um, and, and what was, was fabulous was probably a third of those were mums saying, I do my shopping online, Lee, thanks for asking. I absolutely love Sainsbury's, wouldn't do it anywhere else. I think everybody should do it. So immediately he had this incredible peer endorsement. A lot of brands are very nervous about um, exposing themselves because traditional advertising is all about control. The, the client has control, the agencies have control, the messages are controlled. As soon as you open it up, within a social network, you know, digitally, you are very exposed. You're exposed to disgruntled clients, you're exposed to, um, and, you know, negativity. And it's quite nerve wracking for, for, um, for brands to do that. But every time we've done it, um, we found, you know, nothing but, um, nothing but positives. Yes, the occasional client um, or the occasional mum who had something to say that she'd had a bad experience, but you know everybody knows that if you can if you can turn around a, a, a disgruntled client, um, you have a more loyal client. So this is an opportunity to actually pull the few negative clients there are out of the woodwork, you know, and make them feel good again. I think Steve Jobs of Apple is probably the best example. I mean, he's known to get out there, get down and dirty in the forums, and you know, every so often, maybe once every six months, someone goes, "Oh, you know, my Mac just blew up," and he's there and he goes, "Hi, it's Steve Jobs. You know, tell me about it." And that goes, you know, through every sort of geek forum. In the, in the world that Steve Jobs has actually replied directly to me and that's why they have this you know, incredible loyalty um, from their customers because he's actually willing to, to engage directly with his customers, he's not afraid to hear that. I think it's quite interesting that, that most major brands in the world are still nervous about digital engagement, are still nervous about their digital campaigns. These are the, the brands with every agency at their disposal, every advisor at their disposal and they're still very nervous when it actually comes down to entering into a dialogue with their customers on forums. Um, we've found a couple of times that we've had, well actually more than a couple of times, we've had a major brand who comes to us and says, yes, we're ready, we, we've got our digital engagement strategy, we want to get out there, we want to talk to our customers um, and we work out a, a programme for them to do that. Um, and it may be that the marketing director is very excited about it um, and, and we'll prepare the key messages, get the campaign prepared and then suddenly you'll find that little bits will start being eroded. The lawyers say you can't say this, the nutritionists say you can't say that, the chairman's nervous about that, the board are nervous about something else. And it's like the brand is, they're willing, they're willing in theory but actually they're, they're unwilling to give up control um, and they're nervous about being exposed. Um, for what, I'm not quite sure because you know, it's, it's a fairly simple brand message. Um, and you find that it's very frustrating by the time you actually deliver the campaign to the end user, the, the key messages and the openness has just been eroded and you're left with a very dry, very corporate, flat campaign which just won't work. I think there's probably so many years of creating strap lines, brand messages, um, you know, what we are, who we're about, and they've, they've created documents and folders and files that say this is our brand, you know, this is our logo, this is what we say, this is what we don't say, and suddenly they're being asked to throw that out the window and go in and just kind of give their opinion on a stool. Um, and they just find that that's, it's, it's too many years, too much history of creating the, their key messages to just give that up.
It's interesting because I'm just a mom and I'm sitting there with, you know, marketing directors and advertising directors in agencies and explaining to them that actually those messages are great, but they might be a little bit patronising. They might not be quite relevant to what's going on in the world of mums today. So if you're being sold this image of this beautiful gleaming house and actually, you know, your kids are trashing it day by day, it just, you know, it doesn't fit. So it, has, it, it perhaps sometimes isn't particularly relevant to the mums. Um, and I think the best campaigns are when the agency is willing to listen to us, just us, um, as well as wanting to, to appear to their client as if they've got all the answers. I think a very good example perhaps is that we worked with McCain's, you know, oven chips. Um, a lot of people in the sort of the, the parenting guru sector would go, yeah, chips, chips are bad. Um, but actually, you know, good chips are good chips. And McCain have different types of, of chips in their range. They have the sort of the southern fries, which are the really thin ones coated in, you know, in all sorts of flavouring things. And, and actually, we didn't work with them on those. We, we said that, no, they didn't fit with our values. But we were absolutely delighted to work with them on their 5% um, healthy chip, um, which is pure potato with 5% olive oil um, or sunflower oil. So it's, it's a healthy chip. Another example of a brand where we were a little bit cautious about working with them was when we were approached by Rob. Robinson's, the squash, the drinks company. Robinson's have a lot of great brands. They've got the lemon and barley waters that sponsor Wimbledon, you know, great brand that your grandma used to use. They've got the um, squash ranges for just everyday use with the kids. Um, and then they've got fruit shoots. And we were quite happy with the other brands, but fruit shoots actually has um, had developed quite a bad name in sort of the, the, the grassroots moms. There was even a label um, labelling fruit shoot moms as being sort of kids with a happy meal in one hand and a fruit shoot in the other hand. So there was just um, a, a sort of a an expectation or an understanding amongst a certain group of moms that fruit shoots are bad. So um, not wanting to, you know, to, to take that on face value, we actually sat down with um, the brand managers, with their nutritionist and with an independent nutritionist, and we got all their brands out on the table and we looked at the labels, we examined all the ingredients, um, to, to discover for ourselves actually what these what is going on with these brands because they're major sellers you can't just discount fruit shoots so having established for ourselves that we were happy to believe in the brand we took the advertising campaign to our members but because we knew that some of them would feel the same way that we had in the early days one of the first things we did was actually bring in um, a nutritionist to talk to the mums on the website so any of them who felt there isn't a place for fruit shoots on net mums were able to put their point of view um, and actually the nutritionist had to do very little. It was the peer-to-peer -peer, um, discussion that actually overcame most of the mom's worries. I think with social media you'll find that the successful social media are um, are, are run by people who really understand the people that are using the social media. It's, it's the, you know, the social media that is dreamt up by a brand or dreamt up in a, a boardroom are rarely the ones that are actually successful because social media has to be authentic to rise to the top um, for, the, for the users to take it seriously. Um, and for that reason, we do really understand the people that use our website. So I would say to, to marketeers, um, whilst we might not be advertising agency experts, we might not have you know, years in the industry, we might not have the pedigree of having worked in all the big agencies, we might not be you know, written up in Campaign Magazine, um, but we are actually probably worth listening to if you want to talk about what your audience wants to hear.